Hi, I'm Brant at Crocker Farm Auction, and I'm here to talk about a couple of great pieces of American ceramic history, and specifically New York, New York City history. Um, I think these make a great pair because they give us um, a good opportunity to talk about um, the African American community in New York City from the earliest founding of America and then through the antebellum period into the Civil War. Um, this jug was made by one of the most prominent early African American craftsmen, Thomas W. Comerau, at his pottery on the Lower East Side. And Comerau uh, was was part of really the first generation of um, African-American New Yorkers living in the um, in what was the United States of America uh, under the Constitution. And because these people were living in a time where the rebel the the rhetoric and ideas of the revolution were still very much a part of life in America. Um, blacks who, um, you know, were still obviously second class citizens, even when free, and who by the thousands were still enslaved throughout America, even in New York, even in New York State and New York City. Uh, these people were very hopeful that a time would come soon where uh, those that wasn't the case. And so Comrade was a very politically active man who um, fought for equal rights and um, fought against slavery. And um, he definitely experienced uh, discrimination, discriminatory laws, all that stuff. But uh, as I said, it was a little more of a hopeful time for African Americans. Um, as the 1820s and 30s came on, you started to see a lot more class struggle with lower, lower class whites and um, between those people and, and the black community. And you started to see a lot more uh, virulent racism and uh, racial struggles going on. And that really amped up as the Civil War uh, period came on. And it was in that uh, setting that Thomas Downing lived. Now Thomas Downing, um, was probably the most famous uh, oysterman in New York City history. And he was a free African American who uh, had come from the South and was born in 1791. So he's born only a few years before Conrad founds his pottery on the Lower East Side. And Downing, what's interesting is, as you may be aware, Conrad made uh, oyster jars for African-American oystermen. This was made after Conrad's time, and it was made clearly just based on the typeface being used here, the overall look, all that. It was clear, clearly made in Brooklyn, and it was made for uh, Downing's Oyster Shop at number five Broad Street, also number three Broad Street he operated out of. Um, but what's great about this is, um, it, this is only one of three examples of which we are aware of surviving oyster jars for this extremely important uh, oysterman, African American businessman, and like Kamara, also a political activist. Um, he he experienced. I was doing some kind of original research on him as well. Besides the myriad of things that have been written about Downing. Um, and you can read our auction write-up if you want to learn more about his life and how prominent he was shipping oysters to England and France, actually receiving a gift from Queen Victoria for his oysters, being asked to cater, really important events in the city, um, and all of that. But um, I, I found an incident where he, actually it was kind of a Rosa Parks-esque moment where he was they tried to get him off of a, of a railroad car in the city um, just based on his race. Uh, and it was almost a hundred years to the day before Rosa Parks refused to leave the bus. Um, it was off by like less than three months. Um, 
and uh, he refused to leave, and uh, it, it was just like an ugly incident, but it made the, the local papers, it was a really big deal. Um, there was another um, interesting moment where he was in court and he refused to take the oath because he said that under the Dred Scott decision, uh, he was not really a citizen, so why should he bother? And I thought that was a really interesting um, window into the experience of African Americans during that time period. But what's really neat about this jar, besides the fact that it's such an important artifact, is from an American stoneware advertising perspective, it's really cool. It says, T. Downing Pickled Oysters, number five Broad Street, New York, and we can actually find ads of his. He loved to advertise. And uh, here's one where he's, he's talking about New Year's coming up in 1844. So this would be in December of 1830, 1843 that he's writing. But he says, the, sus the subscriber, grateful for past favors, takes the liberty of informing his numerous friends and customers that he is now prepared to receive orders for his superior pickled oysters for the table on New Year's Day, also for his celebrated boned turkeys. Um, he made all sorts of things. I know he would do turtle soup a lot. And then this last little phrase here, pickled oysters put up for exportation. So this sort of jar would have been used to ship Downing's oysters all over the world, as I said. But these are just two great artifacts that we're really privileged to handle and are really happy to offer in our upcoming summer 2019 auction.